What's up everyone, James here. Today I put together a short video to share some information on how to use the WheelCheck application to set up force feedback settings in racing sims. This applies specifically to iRacing, but could be used in other sims whenever you need to set minimum and maximum force settings. I found myself discussing min force settings a few times recently here on online forums, so I decided to dive into how I personally read and interpret the log files WheelCheck produces to help anyone who is interested in this commonly overlooked setting. I originally found this information through various YouTube searches on setting up force feedback when I joined iRacing last year. Credit where credit is due, I got started with the help of David Sampson's video on force feedback in iRacing. He's a great content producer, so make sure and check out his full video pictured here. But we're mainly going to focus on setting min force and why that's important. Okay, so let's take a look to see where you get the wheel check app. And first of all, we'll take a look at where I got it, which is a link on the iRacing member forum. So this post here, scroll down, it's got some information about wheel check. And then you've got your download links here. So once you've downloaded the application, you can put it in pretty much whatever location you want, but just realize that any files, specifically the log files that it generates, is going to drop it in your documents. So for right now, I've got it in its own little folder. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Drag it in here. So first off is go ahead and select which device you want to check. In this case, it's my T300 RS wheel. So we'll click there. Now we're going to do two different tests on this and compare the results. So the first one is going to be the linear force test. And what this is basically going to do is go stepwise through multiple increments to show when the wheel starts moving by applying a force and then looking for a reaction. So before we do that, we'll go in here, adjust a couple settings. So first of all, you know, I've got the wheel pretty much on zero to start. Not touching it, there's nothing dragging on the wheel. You don't want to have any contact with it while it's running this test. Starts off with a max count of 50, so that's 50 increments. If you want to get a little bit more resolution in your test, you can increase that amount. I'm going to go with 100. So let's see. All right, so we're going to select our test. Linear force test. There you go. Now it may not look like it, but the test is actually running. If you watch the wheel in just a second, it should start moving. There it goes. So you can see the application is sending it just a little bit of force each time, and it increases in every iteration. So it's going to continue to move more and more and more throughout the duration of the test. So it's going to go for, as we set it for, 100 increments, and then it's going to generate a log file for us. So the test has been running for about a minute now, and you'll see it's the wheel is moving quite a bit. So it should be wrapping up here shortly. Okay, there's the end. So now we're going to go back to our documents folder. Go find the log file. So it's here. So we'll take that log file and we'll drag it into that wheel check folder that I created. And let's, we'll get it, the wheel reset and get ready for the second test here. Okay, so we've got the wheel reset. Now we're going to do the second test. So we're going to come over to our drop down box here. No need to adjust any other settings. We're going to select MinForce. This is going to be a fairly quick test. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of motion in the wheel, but we're going to go ahead and click that and say go. 
Okay, and it's done. So looking in here, so it's suggesting an offset for min force at 1%. Let's go check the log file. Again, it's going to be in your documents. There it is, log M force. Okay, let's take a look at how these reports actually come out. So each log file will start off with the linear force test. So it generates a CSV or commerce separated value file. You can open it in a different applications. I've got it in Notepad here. You can also open this in Excel or any other spreadsheet type program. So important thing is right across the top here, this is what the columns mean. So first column is the actual force, and this is basically a percentage. So we see 100. So what you do is you take the last two zeros and that ends up being your percentage. So 100 is 1%. 200, 2%, so on and so forth. Second column is your start X value. So this is what your wheel is essentially reading as its position when it tries the first increment or each increment of this test. So it takes that X value. Next column is your end X. So after it's applied that force, it looks at where have I moved to. So this is where I start, this is where I finish. So as, as you can see, you know, it's zero force, everything is zero across the board. 1% force, yeah, it moved a little bit, but it didn't go anywhere. So at 200, we got start and end at the same place. So we start seeing movements here. What you're looking for is this third column, delta X. This is your change in position. So start, finish, change in position. When this number goes from zero to anything else, that's when you hit your min force. So that's the important number in this value. And this is the delta X in degrees. So this tells you how much the wheel rotated. So you don't have to pick the absolute minimum out of this. So in this case, we go from zero to one at 300, so 3%. So that was the first value where we measured any appreciable difference. And as you can see, when you go 400, hasn't moved a lot more, 500, delta starts increasing and the delta gets larger and larger as the force goes up. So looking at the numbers again, you start seeing 1,000, 1,700, 2,000, basically move that decimal place over two positions. So 1,000 is 10%, 2,000 is 20%. That's the number that you're gonna to need to translate back into the iRacing force feedback controls. So that is the linear force test. Let's come over to open up those results. Now, if we believe what the application is telling us right off the bat, we would say, okay, well, our linear force test said 3%, but our min force test says 1%. So this is where it gets important to be able to read the data and go through the log file and see where things actually happen. So a um, little bit different columns in this particular test. So you've got a, t a, a test time in milliseconds, which is the first column. DT, which is just the change in time in milliseconds. You've got the force applied. So this is going to be your percentage again, just like the linear force test, but it's going to be represented because it's given the same force over multiple times. So you'll see here, you know, at the zero every few milliseconds here, and then this is your position. So we started off at seven. This is the raw value for the uh, position of the wheel. So this would be if you're looking at your iRacing setup and you set your wheel from zero to 65,000, let's say, um, that's 
the midpoint of that is going to be your your center of your wheel so that's why you see these ranges here in the 32,000 34,000 range but this is your basic position so at this system value our x position is zero and this is the number of degrees that it's reading that rotation of that wheel so we're at position zero but we're 0.35 degrees off of zero so uh, not enough you'd actually be able to see it but it's not exactly on zero so let's take a look at this file just going to stretch this out a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the data okay so what we're looking for is a change in these two columns so your raw system value and your degree value and then we're going to see what force is applied Remember, it's suggesting to us that happens at 1%, so 100 value for force. Let's see what it actually does. Okay, so here we are at half a percent. And it's negative because of the direction of the force that it's trying to apply. If it was positive, it would just literally be going the other way. So here we go. Now we're at 100. So if we look at our two right columns here, we're applying 100, but we're not seeing any change. So let's keep on going. Still not seeing any change. Okay, so now we're up to 1.5%, and we still haven't seen any movement in the wheel yet. So this is why I don't trust the value that it gives you on the surface, because it's not exactly telling you the whole story. Okay, we see our first change down here, so right here. So at this point, we're at 150, and it goes from 0.35 to 0.33 degrees with this input. Now, that's a tiny, tiny movement. Um, so... So what we want to keep an eye on is, you know, what is the relative change in these, in these numbers? So we're still in the 150s. 200s. Still not seeing a lot of movement. So that first change in number could have been a false alarm. So we're going to keep on going down. Okay, now we're starting to see something here. So looking at these values. So going from 0.33 to 0.3. So a little bit of motion there. Now, still not a lot, but now look where we are again. We're at 250, so two and a half percent. Looks a whole lot like our linear force test, right? Okay, here we go again. So, going from 300 or yeah to 300 here, we see a change from 0 0.30 to 0 0.28. So that's one of the larger changes we've seen. Here we are again, another change. So now we're at three and a half percent and we go from 0.28 to 0.25. So that's about on the same order 
as what we saw before. Again, so 400, 0.25 to 0.24, not a lot of change there. So we're at 450, we see another shift of about 0.3 degrees. So what this is telling us here is that if we take the lowest of these numbers, we, we didn't see, we saw barely any motion down there at the, uh, you know, 1.5 level. Even at the 2.5 level is pretty low. Uh, and then we start seeing it move a little bit more once it's up to, you know, 0.3 and higher. So this is going to line up with the results that we got from our linear force test. It really said that 3% was our bottom threshold for minimum force to get any kind of appreciable movement out of the wheel. So the min force test has really just kind of uh, validated that and given us a little bit more information. So for this particular wheel, I'd say 0.3 is a good starting spot. Uh, you could go 3.5%. You could even go 4% if you wanted to go over a little bit more and try and get that uh, that wheel to just move a little bit every time but not have any of that dead band where it's just kind of sitting there doing nothing. So um, going over whatever your minimum value that you come up with with the software is okay. You don't want to go too far over it because then you start narrowing up that range of motion that you're trying to achieve. So, you know. With these results, we'd start at 3%. Uh, realistically, I'd probably set it at 3.5%, uh, maybe even as high as 4 and try and get the uh, feel that I'm looking for in that wheel. So this is how you use the Wheel Check app to figure out the minimum force required for your wheel. Of course, the maximum force should always be the rated amount that your system can generate. So for this particular T300RS, we'd be looking at 3.8 Newton meters. Uh, every wheelbase is going to be a little bit different, but uh, they're all rated. You can find that information online and see what the appropriate max is for your particular wheelbase. But uh, figuring out the min, that's going to be different not only between every manufacturer, but also even between individual wheels that may differ slightly. You will get multiple res results if you run these tests over again. So it's not going to be something that you hit every time, you know, the same number each time you run the test, the starting position of the wheel can influence it. Um, just the individual test itself, a lot of the different things that can influence what that number ends up being. So a good rule of thumb is run it three or four times. Take the average value that you get out of each of the tests. So say you get one that gives you two, one that gives you three, the other one gives you four, and the last one gives you like 4.5. So you know, you'd want to be at like a 3.2% or as close as you can set it in the in the uh, iRacing application. If you can get it close and get it dialed in to a point where you feel comfortable, that's the most important part. So I would recommend doing that to get the widest range of force feedback possible given your current wheel configuration. Thanks for watching. As always, if you liked the video, click the thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time I post a video, go ahead and click the bell icon and it'll shoot you a notification when a new video goes up. So once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.